think I'd better tell you the story of how it all started. Ruth Borchard was born in 1910 in a fishing village near Hamburg. Uh, she came to Britain with her husband, Kurt, in 1938. They were refugees from the Nazis. And then one day she was in her, in her house in Reigate walking up the stairs and the thought came to her that she could, she could fill in the wall space with self-portraits. She'd been thinking of some introspective medium that she could collect and she thought of writers, journals and diaries and letters. And she decided that self-portraiture was the closest an artist got to autobiography, autobiography in paint. And then it suddenly occurred to her, literally as she stepped on a particular step, that she would create this, self, this collection of British self-portraits. My father had promised my mother a painting by her favourite painter. It was just a small painting. And she looked at that and said, a painting by Goya, what I always wanted. 2,000 guineas. No. For 2,000 guineas, I'll buy a hundred self-portraits of painters painting in London and England today. And I'll give each of them 20 guineas. The collection was put together largely in the 50s and 60s by Ruth Borchard. She used to go around all the art galleries in, in London, the most avant-garde galleries, and she would go to the Young Contemporary Show every year, which was a nationwide show of students' work from around the country, and started then to write quite furiously to... Well, between 1956 and 1971, maybe 200 or more artists. She collected 100 self-portraits, and that wasn't intentional, it just ended at that. <laughs> Her limit was 21 guineas per picture, which even in those days, I can tell you, wasn't much. Um, but people just loved the idea of being part of this collection. Originally not widely known, the collection now has become independently recognised as the Ruth Borchard collection of British self-portraits. It was her son Richard that came into the gallery one day and asked me if I could have a look at his mother's collection of paintings. He knew everyone there and I think he even represented one of the two and he was excited so we went back to Hampstead and met my mother. And throughout her home there was this remarkable collection. Robert said, yes come on we'll get it going. And my mother she was I think very late 80s then. She said yes go ahead do something out of the collection let's make, make it live again. When the opportunity came up to show the work, um, this wonderful collection of self-portraits here at Pallant House Gallery, um, we immediately thought it would be a fascinating thing uh, to present in relation to our wider collection of modern British art. I think some of the, the, the self-portraits that we have by abstract artists, such as Hilton and, for example, William Gere, are the most surprising things in the exhibition because people don't know their figurative work and to see how an abstract artist sees themselves is, is, is quite extraordinary, I think. The collections travelled to many different venues at home and abroad. This is the first time it's come to Pallant House Gallery and the first time we've taken the approach of showing a highlighted collection from the self-portraits. And also the first time it's been shown in a period building like this, a Queen Anne house. And don't they look remarkable in this kind of setting? Very few museums have this combination of modern art and historic rooms. And of course, it recalls the work um, in, a, in a different kind of domestic setting, but how they were shown in Ruth Borchard's house. And so many of the works, they're not huge scale works, they're intimate works that were designed to be hung on walls of people's houses. And so I think there's a real intimacy to be able to see them like this.